This is Art 154, Lecture 5 on Lighting. I'm going to teach you, uh, we're going to start with the basic outdoor lighting setup um, and explain basically the concepts of three point and four point lighting, which you hear about. It's commonly used uh, lighting photography and also for TV and movies as well. So we have what we're going to call our golf ball, and we'll kind of look and see that's just a basic uh, image. Um, sphere, there's absolutely nothing special with this. The one thing I might want to do is kind of make sure you see how the ground plane, I can kind of see the edge. So even before we do anything else, if I just go to render this and if you just kind of look at the basics, you'll see that there's this edge here. So if you remember, if we go in and we can do uh, show save frames, now we can see what the image looks like when it's cropped, and then we can come in and do a couple things. One thing I usually just find the easiest to do is just to scale out the ground plane. And now if I go to render this, we're good to go and it's kind of clean. Okay, so uh, one of the first things we want to look at, and, and these are just basic, we'll, we'll gradually work through these, is you'll see right now it's black in the background and let's make it look like it's actually day. This will help us some. So if we go to the rendering environment, color, and change the color. And the one thing people have a habit of doing is making the sky very, very saturated. It's actually very, very subtle. You can see the color that I'm picking as opposed to doing something where you have this incredibly saturated, um, like dark blue or something like that. Um, that's just going to overwhelm the scene. So if you want something that's a little bit more realistic, you want to try to dial that down and also try to keep it in the blue zone. I actually have it in a little blue green zone. So hit OK and close this out and let's go render this again and now we have something that looks more like an outdoor scene so the first light we're going to add is uh, called the key light that's the dominant light source and it's the one that will actually shine what's called the little specular highlight which is the the shiny white um, spot that you see on things what a specular highlight actually is is a reflection of the light source and even though we're going to have multiple lights only the key light that's the only one that actually creates a specular highlight because the other ones are going to be used to simulate light bouncing so we'll go to lights uh, standard and we'll just grab the omni um, and other programs this is called a point light and we're just going to put it in place and you see the instant we do that all of a sudden the um, preview changes and the rule with this is we're going to use a technique or a setup called Rembrandt lighting. So the rule is it's 45 degrees up and 45 degrees forward. And what we want to do is we want to ideally get our highlight here and then we want to get the dark part at one third. We don't want to do something where we have the dark part in the middle because that will flatten out the image and that's a common error people make when they draw or they light stuff. We want to make sure the dark parts here and the highlights here that we see both of them. So go and render this out at this point and look at it. And okay, so now it doesn't look that different. There is a specular highlight here and you can see the edge. So the one thing that's missing on this is we select the light and by default shadows are off on these lights. So I'm going to turn that on and now you see in the, the preview we get that. And if I go to render we get the same thing. So that's pretty helpful uh, as far as the set out. There are different controls you can do to adjust it. And if you look at the book, there's um, actually uh, a bunch of different controls for shadow parameters to control what the edge looks like, what color they are. Um, there's a, these bias, size, range, all control the characteristics of that edge. So if you get an edge that you don't like, if you're too close because you can see it's a little clunky, you can clean it up. So uh, now the light's coming in. We're not doing any bouncing at all. So the next thing that would happen, the light come down, hit the ground, and bounce up from below. So the next light we're going to add is a bounce light. Let me rename this original light, key light. Okay. And now in front view, I'm just going to drag, sift drag a copy off, and this is going to be a bounce light. Hit OK. And I will put it over here. And you see how all of a sudden, because they're similar, that's washing it out. So uh, a couple things we can do is we want to come in and I'm pretty sure it's under advanced effects. Advanced effects for this new light. We want to turn the specular off so the shiny is gone. And the other thing we want to do is this is way too bright, and that's called the intensity. Oh, we also don't want it to cast shadows. And open up here, and you see a multiplier. That's how intense your light is. And then there's also the color. 
So if we change this to 0.2 and we take a look, um, it's a little less. You can see it's a little bright, but it's helping out some and it's looking some more realistic. And the other thing we can do is we can actually create a, what's called a color bleed. And we can use the eyedropper sample, and now we actually have that color added to the light. Now that's a little extreme, but just to kind of show you and make sure that you see it when you're looking at it on your screen, just to, to kind of let you see what it is. Um, we could come in and knock the saturation down if we wanted this to be more realistic. But it's that idea of lights coming down, it's collecting the color, and it's going back up. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so that's the second light. Um, the third light is the job is to kind of fill this up and generally fill the top. And that um, you can call um, fill light. So we're going to go up and above this time. And this is going to be our fill light. Okay, and let's see what our update is. And if I move this one around and just go to adjust, what I'm going to do with this is the main thing is to basically switch this over to blue and knock the saturation down and make it a little bit brighter. And let's get it closer to blue, actually. So what it's doing is it's actually illuminating the top and helping, helping to soften the light a bit. And you could knock down the multiplier for that, or you could keep it as is, but that's um, the basic setup. So our render, it's going to look pretty well the same. So we have our key light coming down, dominating here. We have a bounce light below that's illuminating this. And then finally, we have a fill light that's coming in and adding blue, also lightening the shadow. Now, if you want to see each one individually, there's a handy tool called Light Lister. So go into Light Lister, and you'll see here's a list of different lights, and you can toggle on them off. So you can see that's what the fill light does. This is what the, the bounce light, the fill light does, and this is what the key light does. So you can turn everything on and off, and you can kind of see what's happening. The shadows are off on all of them except for the first one. The multipliers you can see are a little different, and we'll talk about some of these other issues later. So that's the first um, example, and I have that uploaded, and also the final version, so you can take a look at it. So let's look at the next one, and that's going to be Lighting Demo 2. Okay, so this one's slightly different. Um, we'll go render it out. Um, right now there's a ceiling, but we're not seeing it because it's using the default light. Uh, if you look, there's a specular highlight right here, which means the light source is actually up here. Um, if you don't have any lights, there's a default light, so you can actually see what's happening. If you didn't have one, then you wouldn't be able to see your scene at all. So let's turn on a save frame, move the camera in to kind of get composition going. Um, that should be fine. Now what we want to do is add lights. Now the light source is going to be inside the lampshade. So the first thing we want is we want the light to come from there, the key light, and it's going to go up and hit the ceiling. Now if you want to do realistic, you can do create light and you can add the Omni which we did before and just put it inside the shade. To have a little bit more control we're going to use the spotlight. So I will add the spotlight and you can see the instant I add it it changes the scene. Now right now it's upside down so I'm going to take it up and move it and come in and rotate it and then adjust it a bit. Just get a little lower and you can see the only thing I'm getting is this highlight and also the other thing you'll notice when I render this it's blue and that's because when you create a light and this takes a little bit of time to get used to let me change this to key light when you change this it defaults back to the last light you made and I personally find this annoying but that's just how it is so we're going to knock this back up to one and technically this is casting a specular light but there's nothing to see the other nice control you have on this is if you go in the spotlight parameters, you have two elements. And if you kind of look in the side view, it'll help you to see it. Let me go up. Now I don't have this selected. Um, there we go. Okay. So what we'll do is you'll see that there's um, some different elements. The big ones we want to look at is the hotspot, which is the inside, and the fall off. And right now they're the same. But if I increase this, you can see how that grows. Now generally I don't, I recommend not doing that, but this looks sloppy. Um, so I try to make sure that the fall off, which is the first edge, is closer to the center. And then the lower the number you make for the hotspot, the softer it is, the harsher it is. So you can see you can kind of adjust and change the properties of the light depending on what you're doing here. 
So that's the key light. Um, and it looks like I'm getting a little bit, which means it's a little too far. Oh, yeah. In the front view, it's slightly outside of the object. Okay. So that's our first light. So now we want to simulate bounce. So the light's going up. So now it's going to bounce down. So we'll create. And the rest of these will just use uh, Omnis. Uh, you could use a spotlight again. I prefer just using Omnis. It's just easier. And we're going to put this right above the light. And this is dominant at this point. Let's do this is uh, ceiling bounce. And let's take the this and knock it down. Because it's not supposed to illuminate the whole thing. Now the one thing that's a little off at this point, as you'll see, um, we also have a specular highlight that's being cast by that. So we want to turn that off. Um, we'll deal with that later. But if we go down and do advanced effects, specular, turn that off, now it's gone. It's kind of subtle, but once again, it's realistic. We'll add something later. Um, really what we're looking for is the light coming down. Um, now the one thing that looks a little funny or a little off on this is it's illuminating the entire surface evenly. And in reality, what's going to happen is the further away you go from that light source, the lighter it's going to get. And that's called uh, decay. Um, the one that fit real, um, mimics real life is called inverse. And you see if you increase and decrease, you see there's a circle of influence so you can kind of control kind of how it looks. It also has some relationship to the multiplier as well. Um, if you have the multiplier and you go, you'll see it. It's more dramatic as opposed to if you have it left. So there is some type of relationship. But you can use that to add a little bit of realism. And now it's not as bright. And like I said, you can really play with this to get it pretty extreme, uh, depending on how much bounce you want and illumination. And I'm going to kind of keep it bright because usually these torch lights are pretty bright. So that's the second light. Uh, third light, if you haven't guessed, is the light that goes right below. So I'll put this below. Um, and this is going to be called floor bounce. And now we kind of have an issue because you can see this is blending up and this is blending down. And it's creating these weird marks on the wall. Uh, we can keep the inverse. We can keep the multiplier. Technically, the multiplier would be a little less. Um, each time the light bounces, it loses something. But we need to get rid of these highlights here. So the nice feature they have, because we're not doing realistic lighting, is called Exclude. So if you open up Exclude, you'll see there's a list of all the objects in the scene. And what we want to do is the only thing we want to illuminate is the ceiling. So if we go ceiling, include, and pop open and go OK, when we go to render, you'll see the only thing that this lights is the ceiling. Now we're not going to see it in this preview because it's not um, doing it realistic, but in here we're actually getting it um, to actually work. We might also want to look at adding the lamp as well into this. If we go to render now, now we actually get some illumination on the lamp so that's not completely black. Um, because the light's bouncing around, this isn't going to be very distinct. However, the one thing to help with the shape is to get a specular highlight actually added to it. So what I do is I create just a, um, another light, and I'll just create one from scratch um, so we can go over it. And I put it out here, and all this, the only thing this light's supposed to do is this is a specular light or a fill light for the okay so we got it up at point three uh, that's okay um, everything as far as the brightness you can see it's washing out the only thing we really want this to do is if we turn off diffuse is create this specular highlight and depending on where you position this and where it's located you can adjust the highlight on the lamp and if you bring it in further, bring it out, you can see how it's adjusting. So this is kind of a handy technique in order to help to get some realism added to your surface and also to kind of make it so it's not completely flat. So now if we render this out, you see we have our highlight and it hits here and it comes up. And some of this top has to do with the material, the red material that's actually being used. We can make it so it's a little shinier or not. Um, now right now that's illuminating the whole scene. What we actually want it to do is we only want it to light the lamp group. So we'll include that. And we'll hit OK. And now if we go to render, the only thing that does is basically create that specular highlight and that's it. 